Yesterday, Cy Leon published a report for the first quarter of 2024, and standing beside me is David Larson, who is CEO. Welcome. Thank you very much. We'll begin by taking a look at your revenue. It's increasing from 9.9 .9 million sec in, the, uh, in last year to now 11.8 million sec. This is a 16.1% increase. What has driven it? The majority of the revenue increase is coming from the price increase I communicated in Q4. Uh, and a surprise increase in our uh, legacy processing business. Mm. And uh, despite this increase, you did mention that you were sort of unsatisfied or that sales mm. didn't meet expectations during this quarter. Why is that so? And uh, could you explain a little bit more what your expectations were? We always want more, right? So, uh, so do I. And uh, we and uh, I want our BNPL sauce, i.e. our strategic leg of Silion business, to, to perform slightly or perform faster. Uh, now we have signed our first bank, uh, but the revenues are obviously not uh, recorded in the Q1. Mm. I have actually included the bank here in my question, and I'm very curious to know, is the Mexican bank uh, Banca Ul, I believe it's uh, pronounced. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about this agreement, how it affects you and what it means for Silion, as well as when we can expect revenues from this agreement to come in? Well, this, this agreement is really important to us. It's our first bank. Uh, we and I have been talking about BNPL SAS and, and launching installment plans on existing debit and credit cards for a couple of quarters by now. Uh, and it's really nice to stand here and say, now the customer is here. It's a mid-size bank. Uh, it's a Mexican bank. It proves both the international demand of BNPL uh, functionality on cards internationally, but it also proves that uh, silence technology is truly international. So from a proof point point of view, of course, it's really important to us. Uh, from a revenue point of view, uh, it, is, um, it has potential. Uh, it has potential in the range that I've been communicated in previous quarters. Uh, uh, I've been um, pretty clear that a mid-sized bank could be somewhere between 1 and 1.5 million euro on a yearly basis and Banca Ol, yes, they have that potential uh, throughout time. Mm -hmm. Obviously not uh, in the first quarters or maybe even the first half year, but it mm -hmm. will come. First Bank Mexican then, do you expect the second bank to be sort of in that uh, North American region or do you expect uh, to uh, sign an agreement with a European bank moving forward? What, what's, what geographic are you currently working on? The interesting part with our business model is that it's, it's, it's software as a service is truly international. Uh, the main key and key point for us is to find banks that are uh, right at that uh, spot where they have making the decision on how to add installment plans on their cards. And that bank might be in Mexico, it might be in Africa, it might be in South or East Europe. Uh, what, I'm do what I am saying is, just from our experience right, right now, it's less likely it will be in Sweden. Hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, if we revisit the, your figures then for the quarter, uh, if we include investment support from Visa that you mentioned in your CEO letter, which is reported as other revenue in mm -hmm. your income statement, uh, the figure I would compare the revenue to is 15.2 million sec instead. Could you shed a little bit of light on how the company is uh, currently sort of operating without Visa support? Yes, uh, at the time when we got the investment support from Visa, we were investing heavily in software, in building the software mm -hmm. and building the BNPL platform. That now was launched uh, or went, went live first quarter 2023. Uh, so um, now we are at the point where the, the plane has left the runway. Uh, the, the platform is, uh, is, is, is commercially ready. Uh, and so that's what you see in the income, the prof profit and loss statement as well, that the costs are dramatically lower as well compared to last year. Yeah, indeed. And uh, if we look at your EBDA, it is a little bit better from minus 5.6 in uh, last year's first quarter to now minus 3.9. And this is despite not uh, per personnel costs kicking in yet, uh, but also uh, pending price increases uh, moving forward. Could you tell us a little bit uh, about what has improved EBDA this quarter? Well, if you compare it to last year's uh, same quarter, we, ha we as, I, as I pointed out, we were in heavily investment mode. Mm. Uh, and it was both uh, um, own personnel, but also uh, tech consultants, which uh, as of now, we have zero tech consultants and we are running a lean operation 
and with a clear focus to on go to market. And the pending price increase in BNPL solutions in Q2, how much is this increase and are you alone in increasing prices in the BNPL? sector? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that price increase is still under in, in negotiation with the, the, uh, the, with the customers. Uh, it, uh, as it looks right now, it will be material uh, from, from in, in our profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the price elasticity of your customers, how would you describe it? Uh, now we're basically talking about two customers running on our legacy uh, payment and processing. Mm -hmm. So the price elasticity on, on those two customers are, um, I think they, they are very good customers when we discuss price and value. If we continue to talking about Q2, you were considering uh, to de de divest uh, the payment and processing function. And if not, um, you'll need to acquire additional capital. What would a divestment of the function mean for your, uh, say, cash flow statement? Yeah, yeah. so firstly, it's, uh, what we're talking about here is the final stage of the transformation of a local payment company to an international software company, as Cylon uh, is today. So it's important to us from that point of view. Uh, when it comes to the monetary side on it, uh, that we are having a dialogue with a handful of, of uh, potential buyers here. And obviously this is a sort of a trade secret. Uh, however, uh, there was published an external analysis on, on this topic today, this morning by, by Panzer Carnegie, and they have an estimate around about 80 million. Hmm. And if the divestment don't go as planned, is a capital uh, capital raising? Is that uh, is that uh, certain? Yeah, what what I am saying, uh, and I've said in the CEO letter, is that uh, um, if and we have good hope for that we can uh, make a, a, a transaction and sell the Paynova legacy business. Silent does not ne have a capital need. Hmm. Uh, if we are not successful, we Silon has a capital need until that point BNPL source revenue are accelerating. Mm. Yeah. David Larson, CEO of Cylion, thank you very much for being here and answering my questions. Thank you very much.